Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I last did some autofocus tests on this channel, but today Panasonic has just announced the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II, so it has something a lot of you guys have been asking for or waiting for a long time, and that is PDAF, Face Detection Autofocus. So this is the first Panasonic mirrorless camera that has the PDAF and it works together with Panasonic's DFD contra-based autofocus system and it should give us some significant improvement in terms of autofocus performance. So today I'm going to do another round of tests and I'm going to test it compared against the original Panasonic Lumix S5 and also the Canon R6 Mark II and the Sony A7 IV as well. So we'll see how is the autofocus performance of this new Panasonic camera compared against some of the best autofocus camera in the market. And I'm also going to do some more tests later on in this video to see how does it perform under different kind of situation. But before we start, there's one thing that I want to talk about first. So if you are shooting with the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II, in the camera's settings screen, the detection subject, you can choose between human or face eye detection if you want the camera to detect and track the people that is in front of the camera. So you may wonder, what is the difference between these two modes and which one is the one that you should choose? So, let me do a quick example and explain to you so that you understand which is the mode that you should choose. Right now, the camera is set to face and eye detection. So I'm in front of the camera, the camera can see my face and eye, so you should be able to detect it. And the autofocus will try to lock on my face and eye and follow me. Now, if I turn my face um, to sideways or turn it around, the camera can no longer see my face and what it does now is that it will try to detect and track the subject that is closest to the camera within the autofocus area that you selected. Right now I select the full autofocus area mode so it will find the GH6 and it will lock the target, the autofocus target onto that camera. And if I turn around, it can see my face and eye. It will then change the autofocus back to my face and eye. Okay, now I've changed the setting to human detection mode. And with the current distance that is pretty close to the camera, so the camera can see my face and eye, it should be pretty much identical to what it does when I was in the face eye detection mode. But if I now turn my body around and the camera can no longer see my face, but now in the human detection mode, it should now track my head position and follow my head instead of trying to just focus on the closest object, which is the G6. And if I move further away, so the camera can no longer track my head, it will switch to tracking the body and the camera will still follow the position of my body as I move around instead of just trying to focus on the closest uh, object in front of the camera. And as I move back to closer to the camera, it will then switch back to head and face and eye detection. So this is the difference between the human detection and the face eye detection. Panasonic recommend us to use the human detection because it is more reliable, it works, no matter how close or far away you are from the camera. So this is also the uh, autofocus mode that I would use when I want the camera to track a person that is in front of the camera. So I hope that explained the difference and help you decide which mode you choose. The next thing I'm going to do now is to do some comparison tests and we'll start with the original S5 against the new S5 Mark II. One thing that I'm doing slightly different today compared to the previous test is I'm going to shoot in 24 frames per second because this is the frame rate that some of you guys said I should use for the autofocus test. I usually shoot in 30 frames per second because that's what I use for my YouTube video. 
but I switched to 24 frames per second and what that means is the DFD autofocus system uh, if you know a little bit about it you know that the higher frame rate you shoot normally the better performance it is so shooting at 24 frames per second today should make the S5 autofocus performance not quite as good as it could be if I shoot at 30 frames or 50 or 60 frames per second but let's see what the performance is going to be like
right now I'm in Tokyo and I'm now filming at Shibuya. Behind me is this Shibuya crossing. So that's the busiest crossing in the world. And I am filming using the, um, the Lumix 24mm f1.8 lens at f1.8. All the autofocus setting is pretty much standard. I'm using the full area plus face detection. And I just want to see how good or how bad uh, the autofocus performance is. Right now, it seems to be pretty good from what I can see on the uh, camera's LCD screen. It seems to be able to track my head and my eye position very accurately and very quickly. And it seems to be I'm always in focus. But later on, I'm going to do some more testing at night time to see how the autofocus performance is uh, in the evening when there's not that much light. But um, at the moment, I actually put on the ND filter, variable ND filter, the refill range ND filter to limit the amount of light that goes into the camera because I want to keep the shutter speed uh, not super fast. So yeah, it seems to be pretty good. Let me switch around. Seems to be able to track my eyes and do the changes very quickly and also very smoothly. Let's do one more time. Yeah, even at f1.8, it seems to be doing pretty well. So yeah, pretty excited uh, about the new improvement. But I will do some more tests very soon in the evening and see how does it perform. All right, finally, it is nighttime and let's continue the autofocus test here. And now I'm in the area called Ropangi. So here is a pretty dark little side street. I'm shooting at around ISO 6400 using uh, still the 24mm f1.8 lens at f1.8 and using face detection. So yeah, I think the daytime result was pretty good. But let's see under low light, how does the camera performs? So the reason why I come here is because there's a street with lots of uh, lights on the street on the trees so we almost there and I show you that that's the area I'm talking about so very pretty and I want to see whether those lights uh, if I put in the background will they affect the autofocus uh, stability would it cause the autofocus to drift to the background. Is there any pausing? Don't really see any pausing. Once again, I'm shooting with all the stock standard autofocus settings. So I haven't changed any settings at all. And yeah, it seems to be pretty good. And let me turn around. And turn back. And turn around. Very pretty area. And myself. One more time. And myself. Yeah. It seems the autofocus is very stable and at the same time very responsive, uh, which is a lot better than the previous Panasonic cameras. Sometimes it may take two three seconds before it will come back to focus on you when you turn it around but this time it seems only take maybe a second at most which is very comparable with most of the leading brands so that is definitely very good 
and also you see I have some bright lights in the background this one seems to be a problem if I turn myself to Yeah, I think the result seems to be pretty good, but I will definitely be doing more testing when I back to New Zealand and I'll let you know if there is any issues. Okay, what do you guys think about the autofocus performance of the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II? Does it meet your expectation? Do I still need to do more autofocus tests in the future? Drop a comment below, let me know. And this is just one of the videos that I've created about the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II. You should really check out my full review because not only I will share more of my thoughts and findings about the autofocus system, but I will also show you some of the really great but more hidden features that comes with the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II.